Hello. Time has come to talk of many things. Like the X-Men, the Fantastic Four. Spider-Man. Alright. Got some eggnog. Yeah. So good. And it's 31 on 31 time. Non MCU Marvel Edition. These are all Marvel movies that aren't under the MCU banner. They may MCU adjacent, like Venom. Venom let to be Carnage, but they're not, you know, part of the MCU. There's 31 of them. I had to take on Electra to fill this up because I'm going to have Howard the Duck in there. So, here we go. Number 31, worst of the bunch, Fan Four Stick. What can I say about this movie? It hasn't already been said. It's terrible. It's a reboot of what I thought was a decent enough. Fantastic Four. I'm a big Fantastic Four guy, right? I grew up with a cartoon. I love the Fantastic Four. This is not the Fantastic Four. They decided they're going to reboot it and make it gritty. That's not what the Fantastic Four is. It's not gritty. You can't do this. Obvious reshoots with obvious wigs. It doesn't work. Josh Trank even said he had a good movie. And the studio fucked it up. Studios should be fucking it up. I should actually do like a top 10 movies that were ruined by studios. But yeah, the studios, I don't know if this is picking the room. But Josh Trank directed Chronicle. And Chronicle is a very good movie. This is not. My biggest gripe is they decided to use Doctor Doom again. I get it. Doctor Doom is the primary villain for Fantastic Four. He's already been done twice. In the original Fantastic Four movie, and the even the 94 one, it didn't even come out. And then the, the Silver Surfer, which was unnecessary, which I'll get to later, they did it here, and they did it wrong. Like, he's barely an antagonist, and his, for a gritty reboot, you still give him the name Von Doom? I guess in the original script he was Victor Damashez, but they changed it. The studio changed it because that's not his name. And it doesn't make this any more serious. And everything is so dark. You can't see anything. It's terrible. Number 30. Uh, runner up to that is X-Men Dark Phoenix. And now the reason this isn't at the bottom is because I knew it was a bad movie going in. I knew it was going to suck because all the trailers didn't interest me. I had no hopes for this whatsoever and it just blew out my hopes because not no you know the obvious death in the movie of mystique which some could say to the timeline doesn't make sense it makes more sense than what we are what the death at the end of the movie but her death it doesn't really matter because it i always go by the end of days of future past which is higher up on this list of course uh Wolverine sees that every one of the X-Men is still alive. Remember that. Uh, so, Mystique dying, not a big deal. It's a different history. But then they kill off Jean at the end of this. And it's like, no, you can't do that. Because you already showed she's still alive in 20, 30, whatever it is in the future. So you can't kill her off. And again, rewrites. They had to do reshoots. Because it was too close to Captain Marvel. The ending of this, apparently. Uh, it, I don't know. Not much hope going into it. Oh, and one big problem I had is that they had... They decided this time we have to establish that the Phoenix comes from outer space. But if you were going to do that, why did you have her use the Phoenix power in the movie before this? And you bring in aliens, but it's the wrong ones. It's supposed to be the Shire Empire, not whatever the hell they were supposed to be. It just doesn't work. And number 29 is Daredevil. And quite simply, I don't think it's terrible, but it's 
It's when it's in the 2000s. They're trying to be dark and gritty because Blade was good, and uh, then X Men was dark and gritty. So this had to be dark and gritty too. And it just I don't know. It's not impressive. I'll watch it more than the other two. So that's why it's you know, I don't have many complaints. It, it, it's, it's not something I've watched a million times, so I don't have in my mind all the bad stuff. I haven't watched the other two that much either, but still. Number 28 is Blade 2. Now, quite simply, I didn't care for this movie. I thought that the villains were worse. Like, the villain was worse because, it, you know, I like Deacon Frost. I even like Drake in the third one, but the, the villainous one is, to me, it's he's not inspired. He's just another weird-looking vampire. Nothing to write home about. You waste your Ron Perlman. I don't think he gets near as much as he could in this film, and it's just... Meh. You kill off West uh, Whistler to bring him to no. You bring back Whistler just to kill him off again in the next film. So I don't know. I don't know. This movie you could just. I don't know. I just don't know. Number twenty-seven is Ghost Rider, and quite simply. As much as I love Nicolas Cage, this movie is... If you want gritty, this should be your gritty film. It should be rated R. It should be dark. There is some dark imagery, but it's only rated PG-13. And quite simply, Nicolas Cage is too Nicolas Cage in this movie. Sitting there in a chair, whatever it is, with a wine glass filled with Skittles or whatever it is. And watching monkeys punch each other or something. He's... What? And... I don't know. The whole... He had to abandon his girlfriend because he's the writer. Why? Why? And in the end, he does the same thing and it makes no sense. The villain's name is Dark Blackheart or something. And Wes Bentley's fine, but... Eh. Eh. Okay. Number 26 is... Hulk. And, now I don't think this is horrible. I've watched it a few times. I just feel like, you get the Hulk running from the military, which is what a Hulk movie is supposed to be, but you had mutant dogs, Nick Nolte doing whatever the hell Nick Nolte is doing in this movie, and the weird transition and editing with the comic book things, uh, what is his name? Talbot? He like explodes and then does a... Freeze frame, spinny thing, what? I don't know. Sam Elliott is uh, Ross is actually pretty good, and I, I don't I don't hate Eric Bana either, and Jennifer Connelly. Whoa, dance magic dance, but uh, it's it's not one I go to. Speaking of movies I don't go to, number twenty five is New Mutants, and um, this was fine. Uh, if you go into this, don't expect a big battle, you know, epic type X-Men movie. It's very secluded. It's very one, you know, one specific place, one building. They have a big fight against the uh, bear at the end, and to me, that still feels out of place in this kind of cerebral movie you were building, but because, oh, it's in the X-Men universe, we gotta have a big fight at the end, and it leads to them separating, and who knows where it would have gone, but, you know. All right, now. Number 24 is Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. And my biggest problem with this movie is that there's unnecessary... There's two problems. One, you bring back Doom, who is not necessary for this story. You already have Galactus. You already have Silver Surfer, but since... You weren't going to cast an actor to play Galactus. You needed a villain who can talk and be menacing because you decided to make Galactus a big stupid cloud floating in space. Instead of making him an actual villain who talks. No. You decided, hey, we'll just put Doc Doom back in there and it'll be fine. But to me, Doc Doom just gets in the way of the plan. Like... Like, you, they have to stop Galactus, but then they have to halt that. 
and fight Doctor Doom because he's fused with the Silver Surfer's board, and it's like it's it's like someone's poking you, and you they won't stop until you get rid of them. That's what it is. Like someone's poking you, and it's just annoying, and they won't go away until you just do something about it. That's what the Doctor Doom feels like in this movie to me. They should have had Galactus be the main villain and set up Doom for a third film. He did not need to be in this film. They, uh, number 23 is Deadpool 2. And quite simply, this was fun, just like the first one, but the trailers showed us that he was going to be forming the X-Force. And this film, they just all die almost right away. And that's a big middle finger to your audience. Okay. You show in your trailers we're going to be getting a new team. And they all die pretty much. And the ending. Look. I like the ending. Where. You know. Where Cable. Has to use his last little time crystal thing. And now he's stuck. But. That's all thrown away by the credits. Where. Deadpool just goes back in time and does all this stuff. And if they make a third one within the MCU, I hope they retcon that ending and say that Vanessa's still dead and, you know, he's still stuck there and none of that time travel stuff happened. That was just a joke to the to the people because it would make much more sense. Because him going back and saying his girlfriend after all this, after this entire journey... It makes about as much sense. It just it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Number 22. X-Men Origins Wolverine. So I never outright hated this film like some people do. But I see the point. Now I know what Deadpool really looks like. This has gone down, and yes, I I do see the irony. I do I do I do get it. It's right above a Deadpool movie. To be honest, I'd watch this again before I watch Deadpool two again. It's just the enjoyment factor. You're gonna notice a lot of my top ten. Most of my top ten are older Marvel movies from like the early two thousands, because that was my you know era. So I'm going to go back to one of those before I go back to any of the newer ones. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. And x Men Wolverine isn't that terrible. But it does retcon a lot of things. But this series retcons itself every five minutes. But, yeah. I don't know. Hugh Jackman's still good, though. And I did like Gambit in this. We're never going to get Gambit in the X-Men movies. Unless, you know, Marvel... Steps in. Alright, next. Number 21. It's Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. And the reason this is this is higher than the first one. Is I actually think this is a better film. It's more serious in tone. For the most part, Nicolas Cage is more serious. Bar the scene where he's pissing fire. But it's taken more seriously. And it has a serious stake and then he's trying to stop Mr. Stop Lee from getting this kid in. And yeah, it's all, you know, you got Idris Elba in there. And yeah, I think it's better than the first one. And it's something I'd go back to. Not all the time. But if I want to watch, if I want to watch Ghost Rider movie, which is rare, I put that one in. Um, where am I? Mm. Number... 20. We're in the top 20 now. X-Men Apocalypse. So when this came out, I didn't hate it. I didn't get what people were hating on it. And then I watched it when it came out on Blu-ray and I'm like, you know what? I'm starting to see some things here. My biggest problem with this, even in the theater, is that, and Marvel in general, not just this, but Marvel, Sony Marvel, Disney Marvel, they have a problem where they bring in a villain and they only have him a villain for that film. Loki seems to be the only one that doesn't go away. Thanos was another one that, that went through all. But take Carnage, for instance. 
Carnage and Apocalypse, they're two big villains that should hang around for a while. Even Dormammu should be a, a dark presence within the MCU. And they were in one film each. The fact that Apocalypse gets defeated in this film, in one film, is stupid. He, he, did you watch the animated series? It was hard as hell to defeat him. You think you cut him down, he comes back. <clears throat> you just weaken him, he just keeps coming back. There's no way to stop him. That's what he should have been here. But he has to only be in one film because we gotta move on to other things. I don't know. You could have incorporated Apocalypse into the uh, Dark Phoenix saga instead of having the Shi'ar Empire coming after him. Like, what is his name? Deken? The brother? Uh, uh, Landra's brother? It could be Apocalypse trying to take the Phoenix away from Jean Grey and then the Landra comes in with the good Shi'ar Empire. <clears throat> you know? You could have done that, but you know, kill him off in one shot, why not? Uh, number tw 19 is Spider-Man 3. And now this is another one I never hated. To be honest, I had actually rewatched this. I would re I would watch this a lot, actually. I don't mind the Peter dance. You know, no. You know, put some dirt in your eye. I like it. I actually, I actually, I don't hate Topher Grace. You know, my spidey sense is tingling. If you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I like being bad. But I know he's not a good Venom. That is the biggest problem I have with this film, is Venom. When I first watched this, back in 2008, 2007, 2008, I was like, what is this? Venom. He's barely in it. It's all... Like Black Suit Spider-Man. And that's what it should have been. Most of this film should have been the Black Suit Spider-Man if they were going to go for that. But mostly you should just take Venom out. Or you could get rid of any of the other subplots. Like Sandman. Does he need to be in this? Remy wanted to do Sandman. Okay. The one thing I've always disliked is that they try to make Harry a villain. They did in this. They do Amazing Spider-Man 2. Harry's not supposed to be a villain. Harry is... Peter's best friend. I hate it in the animated series when he turned against Peter because he ended up going... Because he was... Okay, so... Harry dated Mary Jane in the animated series. And then Mary Jane left Harry for Peter. And ever since then, Harry's been like a pain in the ass, thorn in the side type character. Where it's just like... Oh, you take my girlfriend. He's like a sore loser, you know? He does become the Green Goblin, but he's never in control of it. He never willingly took the thing, I don't think, either. Maybe he did. <clears throat> I don't know. But, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't work. If you took Venom out, it probably would have worked better, but I still don't like Evil Harry. Or Goofy Amnesia Harry. I know that face. It just, yeah. <laughs> Number 18, X-Men, The Last Stand. Uh, again, another one I didn't hate when it first came out. But I didn't particularly like it either. The ending, again, Dark Phoenix could have been in more than one film. And they didn't even handle her right. She's a side character in this movie, and it's supposed to be about her. Magneto was the main villain in it. And that stupid, um, cure storyline, I never really felt was worth anything. Especially since it gets retconned later. People, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't last or something. I don't know. But I never hate it. It's another one I'd rewatch. But if the, here's a for instance. My son and I were watching this. And I'm like, is there anything else on? So I went to look. And there was another X-Men movie on. It was, what was it? Like Days of Future Past or something. Oh, that's a better one. So we watched that one instead. But uh, yeah. Number 17 is Venom, Venom. Gotta get him, Venom. Yes, I have this lower than... Let there be carnage. Not much lower, though. Uh, just quite simply, while I enjoy everything in this film, Venom and Eddie Brock-wise, 
The villain leaves much to desire. For me, he's a bland villain. He's the same color as as Venom, basically. He's a little purple, I guess, but he's not much a different color palette. It's just, yeah, you know? And his motivation is what? To help take over the world? I don't, I don't know. Of course! Um, I gotta start a different stack here, so this is the side. Number is 16. Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man is a good movie. But the reason it's so low, and it's even under Amazing Spider-Man 2, is because I feel like it's just a rehash of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man with a little bit different storytelling. What do you have? Petey gets bit by a spider. Uncle Ben dies. You have a big green villain that terrorizes the city. Same as Sam Raimi Spider-Man, with a few things changed. You know, you don't get the great power comes great responsibility thing. He says, if you have more obligation to do something, you know, whatever. The lizard is not as good as Willem Dafoe. No, although Risa Fines is a good actor. You've seen him in the uh, the replacements. He's really good in that. Oh. But yeah. And it has a darker tone. Uh, which can give and take. I find myself watching Music by Man 2 more than I hate to do this. But, um, yeah, it's fine for what it is. But Andrew Garfield is my favorite actor to play Spider-Man. He's very good with the emotions. Most like I say with Timothy Dalton as Bond. He, he's not my favorite, but he's good with emotions. And he, he has good emotions here, and I like that. He can cry, and it doesn't look weird like with Toby. Uh, number 15 is Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And, uh, yeah. This is very quickly paced. I, I don't think, you know, I enjoyed this a little bit more than Venom, but I feel like Shriek was a very stupid choice to put in this film when she's teamed with a villain. She's a villain who has supersonic, a supersonic cry paired with a villain whose weakness is supersonic. That doesn't make any sense. Like, there's even a scene she uses it and it hurts him. Why would you pair those two together? It makes no sense. Maybe it's in the comics, maybe, but it just doesn't make any sense. And they don't even utilize it right. She should have turned on him to defeat him. And you kill off Carnage. Should have ended with her turning on him. They split. The government shows up and takes both of them away for a future film. But no, because we're Marvel. We're Sony Marvel. We gotta kill our villains in one movie. So... You know you're trying to build a universe with this. So he dies. Sure. And I did like when Venom was in Mrs. Chen. That was kind of funny. Uh, number 14 is Spider-Man. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. And I find this to be good. From this point on, I don't have many big problems with these movies. If any. Uh, but... Uh, quite simply, the reason it's down this low is because I enjoy the others a little bit more. It This is a little kooky, a little campy, but it's it's a fun watch. You know, Sam Raimi, Spider-Man, always a fun watch. Number 13 is The Wolverine. Uh, the Wolverine is a standalone Wolverine movie uh, set in Japan, and it's actually very good. But much like my problems with Spider-Man 2, which I'll talk about, you take away his abilities in this and you have to because the people that he's fighting for the most part are human so if you have the superhuman guy fighting humans it's not fair so we gotta take his powers away and it just i don't know it doesn't work but i like the silver samurai costume the twist of yashida still being alive wasn't a twist to me i was like it has to be him who else could it be you know but i enjoy it Following that, number 12 is Logan. And yes, go ahead, blast me in the comments. Oh, they should be number one. I don't praise this movie like everyone else does. I think it's the best Wolverine movie, but to me, it's not the best X-Men movie. It's not even one of the best Marvel movies, in my opinion. 
Imagine if I did one of X, if I had the X-Men to the Marvel MCU films and ranked them, how low this would be. I enjoyed this movie, but to me, it just, it just didn't sit with me like the other ones did, really. I'm surprised it made this high, but I, I, I will be watching this. I, I prefer the noir cut. In black and white, I think it is a fantastic film. But there are some things in it that I just don't like. Like, for instance, finding out that Professor X killed all the X-Men. So why, what was the point of bringing them back at the end of Days of Future Past, anyway? And everything is a wasteland, basically, which... <clears throat> okay. And... Sleeps in his car, and there's this X-23 I liked. But... I don't know. It's not one I rewatch often. It has a darker tone. It's rated R. And the end, with Wolverine's death, it's, that's not something I want to see over and over again. I haven't watched this in a while, but it is a good movie. I do like it, but moving on. Number 11. No. Number 11 is Blade. Yes, I like Blade better than Logan, and quite simply, you have a good villain. It's one of the first Marvel movies that really got going. We got the, the ball rolling with this wound, X-Men and Spider-Man, stuff like that. But yeah, Wesley Snipes' Blade is very good. You know, motherfuckers are always trying to swim upstream or whatever it is. I love it. And I love Deacon Frost as a villain, you know. Uh, it's a good movie. If, if, if I want to say anything bad, it's that CGI, not so good. But, uh, yeah. And you may notice that it's on here a little bit higher than, a little bit lower than... than Blade Trinity. We'll get to that when I get to it. Uh, but uh, next, number 10, X-Men First Class. Quite simply, I was very iffy on this when it came out. I wasn't sure about it because there is going to be no Wolverine, no Cyclops, no Gene. Like, what is this? And then when I watched it, I was I'm like, why are they retconning Mystique and Professor X? They were never that close. She barely even knew him in the original ones, but I don't know. They were, it looked like it was, this was supposed to be a reboot. So this was a new universe, and then they decided, fuck it, we'll just put them both together. And I don't know. This whole new class of mutants coming together, the reason it's this low is that when you think of what eventually happens, and this is in my top ten now, to the characters in this, like, almost every single character from this is dead by the time the franchise is done. Except for <sighs> Professor X and Magneto. That's it. Oh, and, and Mora. She's still alive. But, and Beast. They're the only ones still alive, really, from this movie. Everyone else has died. In some way, shape, or form, but, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I should have mentioned that in my apoc when I was talking about Apocalypse. You know, killing off Cyclops' his brother. They barely got any scream time. <laughs> but, also Alex is supposed to be younger than him, not older than him, but... Oh, and they don't age. That's the biggest problem with the franchise after a while. Is they decide to go decade by decade. They don't age in the 40 years between this and Dark Phoenix. They don't age at all. That's another thing that's just kind of baffling. But, number nine... Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I know this is, you know... This is like a, a clusterfuck. <clears throat> Never cared for Electro as a character. Even in the new Spider-Man animated series, whereas Max Stone was this nerd getting picked on, and I never really cared. I liked the version ahead in the original animated series where he was the chameleon's son. I liked that. It wasn't the right version, but I liked that. He had the green costume. The blue one never really... Sit with me. Again, again, they made Harry a villain that's not necessary. And they turned him into the Goblin right away, which was too quick for me. They killed off Gwen Stacy. One of the best things I can say about this film and why I like it so much is the relationship between Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker. They were dating in real life, so they have real chemistry. You bring in the Rhino, he's in it for like five minutes. 
And yeah, I don't know, but I do enjoy watching this. If it's not just for good fun, you know, I I don't hate on this like everyone else because I actually enjoy watching this. So, oh boy, here we go. This is in my top ten, number eight. Howie the Duck. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, shoot at me. Come on. Uh, what what is wrong with you? This is a terrible movie. I enjoy this movie. All right. I think it's a so bad it's a good movie, and I enjoy it, okay? I enjoy watching this movie. I was going to get the 4K, and I never got around to it. Something else popped up, but I love this. If there's one thing I can say, it's not necessary to have the duck-human love interest thing. That's a little yeah, but I enjoy this movie for what it is. Like, Jeffrey Jones is fantastic in this film as the villain. I am not, yeah, 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 you know? You know, and, and, and Tim Robbins, Howard, wing -a -wing -a -wing -a -wing -a -wing -a I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> Number seven, shoot me now. Blade Trinity. Blade Trinity was the first Blade movie I ever watched. And as such, it was the only one I watched for a while until they got these Blu-rays. I can tell you that as films, the other two are better. But this is my enjoyment. This is how, what I get enjoyment from. And I enjoy Blade Trinity. I like Ryan Reynolds. I like Jessica Biel. Killing off Whistler, I don't know why they did that. And then introducing all these new characters to just kill them off. I even like Dominic Purcell as Dracula. So sue me. Alright? I like this movie. I'm not going to apologize for it. Hopefully these next ones will be a little bit better. Number six is Deadpool. And you know why. Deadpool is awesome. Ryan Reynolds proved that, you know, the mistake was made in X-Men Origins Wolverine. He made up for it in this movie, and Deadpool is a fantastic film. Nothing bad to say about any of these movies coming out now. Uh, I don't think. Number five is X-Men, and I grew up with this movie. Uh, it was darker than the animated series I was used to, but I always liked this movie. Nothing really bad to say about it. Uh, the line, maybe... Would you expect yellow spandex? Kinda. But I do like these outfits too. You know, it's a movie. You can't just put them in yellow spandex. But it would have been nice to see Wolverine in his actual suit at some point. Maybe within the MCU. If they decide to recast the character. Which, I don't know. Hugh Jackman's getting too old. He's in his 50s now. Bring in someone else. All the people saying, Oh no, Hugh Jackman shots with Wolverine. He can't play Wolverine forever, people. He, he actually does age. Number, number, I'm kind of have a weird, hold on. <laughs> I had a glitch in the matrix there. Number four is Fantastic Four, and I just realized I did that without even thinking. But yes, the Fantastic Four movie, another one I watched all the time. I had the DVD. I love this movie, all right? I don't have anything bad to say in this movie. I even like Doctor Doom in this movie because... Sure, it's necessary for him to be the villain in this film. And I'll have to say this. MCU, you don't need to have Doctor Doom be the first villain for the Fantastic Four. Okay, he's been in every single Fantastic Four movie we've seen. We don't need another version of him, at least not right now. If you're going to set him up for future MCU stuff, you do that. But bring in... Puppet Master, or Mole Man, or the the Negative Zone, or even try to redo the Inhumans. You know, do something different. You know what I mean? Just saying. Then it's John Watts. He's done good with villains so far. Maybe he'll find the right person to cast. Who knows? Uh, number two, three. Number three is X2, X Men United. And for the longest time, whoa, for the longest time, this was the best X-Men movie until one came along and blew it out of the water. But for me, this was the best X-Men movie for a while. You got Nightcrawler, who's one of my favorite X-Men characters on there with Wolverine. And uh, I think Stryker is a good villain. He's very cerebral. He gets in Wolverine's head. 
But I don't get his idea to use his own son to use Cerebro and mess with the professor and hurt all the mutants. And then, you know, they have to team with Magneto who then flips it around because you can't trust him to get all the humans. And yeah, I don't know. That's one plot line I never really liked, but for me, it was the best for a while. Number two, Spider-Man 2. And yes, this is still, I haven't seen No Way Home yet. But when it comes to non-MCU Spider-Man films, I guess I could say that, it's still the best Spider-Man film. Uh, I also didn't include Into the Spider-Verse because I've done live action ones. But for me, it's still the best Spider-Man movie. It has one of the best villains. It, the one thing that always bugs me is that they don't actually give a reason for Peter losing his powers. It's just, oh, he lost confidence or he lost his powers. No, that's not how it works. The animated series handled it better where he was mutating and they should have went with that. Where it was, he was mutating. And I thought that's what he was doing. Oh, they're doing the Neo Jack Nightmare storyline from the animated series. And they didn't even know. It's just nerves or something. They, no, that's stupid. That's stupid. But still the best Spider-Man move to me. Not MCU wise, I should say. Number one, X-Men Days of Future Past. This combined the prequels with the originals and had a fantastic ending. I like, you know, they had to use Wolverine. Bishop is supposed to be like one of the main characters and he's on like a side character in the future storyline. You brought in a bunch of new characters that didn't really do much. I don't know if that's really necessary to do that, but who knows? But I do really like this film. I love this film. There's not too many bad things to say about it. And it is number one. On my list, uh, if it is another thing I could say against this, it's that um, the Sentinels, once again, you have a villain that's introduced that just is the, taken care of like that because they stopped Trask. They're no longer an issue, but they were an ongoing issue in the animated series. Even though they were sort of shown in The Last Stand, but... You know, that's number one. So there you go. My 31 on 31. I'm also at Knox, so I gotta go. Non-Marvel, non-MCU Marvel movies done. 31 on 31. So what are your thoughts on this? What are your... How would you do this? You don't necessarily have to do all 31. Just maybe your top 10. Uh, but uh, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.